<laughs> so Patrick, there's been times when you've been criticized for being uh, a, a solely a striker. This is the second fight in a row you've won with your top game and yeah. ground and pound. Is this the best Patrick Cote you, you've been? Is, is this the next evolution of your game? I don't know if it's the best, but I think it's the more complete uh, of myself, a version of myself. I think uh, I improve a lot my, my wrestling and my ground game, like you, like you said, in my, especially against Noak and now with uh, Riggs, that Riggs was, is well known as a, a good wrestler. I think I showed that uh, even if I was a little bit in trouble in the first and third round, I was able to reverse the situation and you know pull the, pull the trigger and, and won the, those rounds. Did you expect this kind of a performance out of Joe Riggs? Oh yeah, you know the guy has 55 fights. You know this guy is a warrior. He's been he's been in the game forever. It looks like he looks older than me, but he's younger <laughs> actually. You know he's he's been through so many wars and he's a veteran. And a lot of people was looking af after him, you know, during this fight, uh, before the fight, because they, everybody said, oh, that was good. It's gonna be a walk in the park for me. As I, I was a man. That's a big miss. I mean, you can you never can underestimate a guy who has so many fights, so many experience. You can't buy experience, you know. You, you fight and you work for it, and when you have it, nobody can take that for, uh, away from you. Now, you were in some dangerous positions in the first and third round, and it seemed every time you got in danger, the crowd just went wild for you. Yeah. Did that help motivate you? Let me tell you something, man. If a guy, especially in Montreal, if you're from Montreal and you're in the cage and you said that, you know, when you fight, you can't hear anything outside the cage. He's a liar, man. Trust me. Especially here in Montreal. You know, I know there's not a lot of people that it was supposed to, but it feel like 20,000 people over there. It feel like uh, the, the crowd is loud, and you can feel the, the, the support for sure. Well, and it does seem like there are less cards in Canada right now than there were. But just talk to me about, you know, what is it like as, as a guy just fighting in your hometown and fighting in front of Canadian? Uh, it's, it's awesome. You know, there's a lot of guys... I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna talk for for me, but I always say that I'm, I'm not. I don't put all more pressure of my of me because I'm fighting at home. It's it's fun, you know. I can sleep my own bed. I can cook my own food in my house. But that's a lie, man. <laughs> you always put a little bit more pressure on you because you fight home and you want to give a good performance. You want to give a, give a good show, and uh, that's what I tried to tonight. And uh, I'm just happy that I won in Montreal finally with no controversy at the end. That's a real win now, so I'm happy. Is it important for the young Canadians, and not just the ones who are in the UFC now, but the ones you know who might be coming watching? Is it important for the sport to have these these major events in Canada? Oh, for sure. You know, the, the major problem here in Montreal right now, and it, not in Montreal, but in Canada, it's serious organization who are, are able to develop young young talent. Because in Canada, in Quebec, in province of Quebec, we have a lot, a lot of young kids. They're trained with the best, but they're they can't fight anywhere. So it's hard to just build those guys to, you know, replace me, replace George, because one day we're not going to be there, you know, trust me. I'm not going to fight until 50. So why, why do you think that guys. is, Patrick? I mean, when you came up, there was, you know, UCC and TKO yeah. and a million other shows for you guys to develop in. Why do you think it's fallen by the wayside and there's just less MMA promotions in Quebec and really across Canada? Do you think it's just because the UFC is so big and runs so many fights now there's less interest, or do you think it's something different at the grassroots? Uh, it, it's hard to say, but I, I, I think that a lot of guy who are trying to make a good uh, organization they they were seeing money at the end but it's hard to make money with those those kind of small organization you have to dev it's more a developing thing that you know, you're gonna you're gonna be rich with that and you know you can see that the, the new organization they always do like one or two show and they disappear after so you know, it, it's it's bad for those guys because in in my time, and I, I, oh, I'm old. In my time, you know, there was a lot of plays that we could fight and you, you know just express ourselves to to move up to the organization. Tom you, Wright spoke about potentially seeing the UFC long term get involved in sort of a minor league type system yeah. in Canada. Um, I mean, do you think that's a good idea, and how would you envision that working? I think it's a great idea because right now to to go in the UFC the best the best way to go in the UFC it's tough it's the, the ultimate uh, the ultimate uh, fighter season that's that's the easiest way and it's not easy and if you're a guy like Conor McGregor who's like like you have a character and you're good you're gonna make the, the UFC but if you're not that you have to pass by the ultimate fighter. And the ultimate fighter, it's not easy. That doesn't mean that you're going to have a contract at the end if you don't win the show. So it's really, really hard now to, 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 to join the UFC because there's nowhere you can fight to, to, to prove your skills. Speaking of the ultimate fighter, did you feel a lot of pride seeing two guys that you coached in the ultimate fighter, Olivier Obermerce and Chad Caprice, win tonight under you know, the card underneath you? 
Yeah, but you know, I, was, I knew those guys before. Uh, I'm just, I'm happy for them. They're, they're not my training partner, but uh, I'm, I'm happy for them. You know, it's a Canadian fellow, so it's, it's great. It's great to, uh, to have those. Actually, that, those young guys, you know, they're, they're be, they're gonna be able to be, you know, the next generation of Canadian fighter in the UFC. Are you turning around and working the broadcast tonight? Yes, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to take a shower and uh, I'm going to the booth right now. <laughs> So what fight are you looking most forward to calling? Uh, man, I, I, I'm a big fan of Maldonado. I don't know why, but I'm a big fan of him. He's throwing so many punches. He's a gamer. He's always going forward. I love watching him, man. He doesn't care of anybody. And Rampage is a character. You know, he's always fun to watch. So this one. Thank because you. I know that, you know, I'm got, it's going to be hard to follow the last fight. You know, like 125 pounds, you know, you just watch them and you're, you're out of breath. You know, it's awesome. But in my head, you know, Demetrius Johnson is the best fighter pound to pound in the world. It's just unreal. So I can't wait to see him perform too.